Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Uh, today we're going to talk about building a palette. I had just recently bought this um, Meaden watercolor palette on Amazon. It's a, a metal container. It folds out like so. And then you can put all these little little pans inside going across. I, I picked up this size as I wanted something that was small enough to take with me and show in the videos. I know I have other palettes that are bigger and you can't see what I'm painting in the videos. But I looked around and I thought this size would be nice and I want to show you how I would build my um, palette. I have my colors out here laid out that I have. I don't have a ton of colors but I have a good amount of colors. Um, one trick is when you have the pan here to write the name of the color on it because you might forget which color it is and that could be a problem later on. I mean you can maybe notice it when you're painting it but sometimes you don't. Um, like in this one that I use a lot in the videos you see there's no name written on it. I pretty much know the colors but if you really want to know what the colors are if you have a lot of them you're going to want to write the name on the little wells that you get with the um, palette. One thing I didn't like about what I didn't know is you can't tell in the photographs when you order it. See how this uh, this side falls down flat, but this side doesn't on an angle. And you could pull it out and use the middle to paint in also, which is kind of cool. But I don't know if they make one that goes down this skinny, goes down flat. I guess not. Maybe not. I don't know how it happened, but I don't know. I think I'd like to try the sides and it's nice and portable, which is nice has this little ring here. Probably if you want to hold it if you're doing plein air painting. I don't know. So that's that's this size case. i um, going to finish writing out all my little palettes here and we're going to build up the, the uh, palette. Something I forgot to mention is that see how it, it comes with these little palettes. And I'm sure you could buy, if you wanted to just pop these ones out that you fill up with the paints and wanted to buy more of these and just replace it because it doesn't contain enough for you or you want to change out the palette colors, you could do that. Um, you can buy these replacement pans anywhere. This, this is the package that it comes with. Okay, so I've you know basically wrote out all the names I needed to do. I'm going to stick my cadmium red hue in here and I'll just fill it up with the paint. You can fill it all the way up if you want. I'm going to fill it most of the way up. Now how do you choose which paints to put in? Well, there's a basic paints. You, have to, you need your basic reds, yellows, greens, blues. Um, some of the paints I choose are colors that are more difficult to create, um, like a turquoise, uh, purple, although if you have rose and you have a nice ultramarine, you can make a nice purple. But sometimes it's just, you know, you want to waste more paint, that's fine. Um, I choose not to do that. I choose to have some of the colors. And some of these are really cheap watercolors and some of them aren't. I mix them up. I just go by the color itself um, because it can be real expensive to use certain brands. And I'm going from like reds to yellow. I mean you could switch this around. It doesn't have to look like this. Kind of like a rainbow. I tend to keep the darks with each other. I didn't fill that all the way up but I will later. I think these two yellows are fine. I just, a lighter yellow, like this pale yellow hue and the medium yellow work fine for me. I don't think I need more than that. Some people like yellow ochre. I mean, you can make that, but if you're a person that uses that color often, obviously you would have to have that. Um, a new one that I bought yesterday, this is emerald green. I don't know, I thought I'd try it out for a while. Some of the greens will have more blue 
blue hue in them. So I'm gonna, this is the permanent green light that you've seen many times um, that I've used recently. It's bright. And the sap green, which you've been seeing me do a lot of. I like this color. It's great with florals because it's not that bright color. It's just, it seems more natural tone of green to me. And then the hooker's green, you know, I talk about it constantly, <laughs> is a great deep green to put in. I'm sorry for the shiny light. I had to film this in my regular studio and not up in my other studio. And so the overhead light is a little shiny. To get the hooker's green. And then um, some blues that I've added recently, which you've seen me do, like the, la the latest paintings have some of the cobalt and ultramarine mixed in with the pinks. Now obviously you can't put in the ones that I use a lot too, which is Dr. Martin's concentrated. It's not going to work in this kind of situation. It has to be liquid, so it's going to stay liquid. Turquoise is another great color to buy for watercolor or even definitely for gouache. That's a color you definitely need to have. The watercolor turquoise is not as bright as if you bought um, the PH Martin's Ice Blue, but good enough. Now see, I, like I said, I wrote the names on the side, but I pretty much could tell which one's what. But sometimes you can't. If you have a lot of colors and the reds are just slightly different, you're going to need to do that because it's going to be a problem. Now let's see if my, I don't know. Yeah, see, look at, is that going to fit in there? Maybe I have to take it out. See, I'm doing this with you. Take the palette out and put that last one in. Doesn't want to even go in. Because I feel like these other ones are going to slide. Well, this might be a little tricky, isn't it? There we go. I'll put that one in. That will be the my favorite of all the, uh, I use a deck book brand actually, Indigo. I use this thing like crazy. And you know, you hear me talk about it. Indigo. In you go. <laughs> and I bought a purple yesterday. This is a dioxide purple. I'm just using that in my new tutorials coming soon. And then I got some basic browns. I have a raw umber and a burnt umber. The raw umber is like clayish putty brown color. And the burnt umber is that really nice, deep, dark teddy bear brown. Just fill these guys up. Then I just have Payne's gray and black, ivory black. Now this is gonna have a lot of space to it and it's probably gonna slide around. So what I'll probably do is stick the palettes next to it so it won't do that. But I'll have all this room now to add more colors if I want. I don't know which colors I'll add, but I'll do that. So that's how I'm going to set this one up. And like I said, I'm going to have to add more of these blank ones so it won't slide around so it's filled in like this. But maybe I could use these for now as mixing paint in, which would be a good idea to do. So this is how I'm going to do my palette. I also want to give you a tip. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, people have asked about brushes, I'm going to reiterate this, how um, their brushes are getting ruined. Well, yeah, when you use your brushes, first of all, don't use the good brushes to mix paint. Use, I use a really crappy old, I've got a few of them over here, like old, just beat up brushes. <clears throat> to mix the paint, we constitute it with water, and then use my nice brushes. So when I'm done using them, I obviously clean them out with water. <clears throat> But then I lay them flat to dry like this, you know, on the table, on a, whatever, until they're completely dry. And then you can put them in 
your containers because if you don't, water will go into the belly of the brush and just change the shape. It's not going to be pretty. It'll stay longer this way. If you don't use them like to mix so much, they'll stay longer too. Um, you want to take good care of the brushes. I don't really use soap and water on those. Um, I would use soap and water on like nice oil brushes, sometimes acrylic brushes. That's just me. I mean, I'm not buying $20, $25 brushes. Um, those will be Kalinsky type of brushes. If you're doing that, then you really want to take good care of your brushes. So this is my basic palette setup. This is, like I said, from this company, Medine Watercolor Palette. They have several sizes um, on Amazon. I got this on Amazon for like $13, fairly cheap. Um, and we're going to work on this using this this week and see how it comes out, see if I like um, painting in here. I saw a tip that someone used like toothpaste, like a gritty toothpaste with baking soda in these wells with a toothbrush just to take off the the sheen a little bit so it's easy to mix the paint. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I might do that um, because this other one, just look at this, it's such a mess. It's a different type of plastic. It doesn't have, this is metal. This is plastic, so it, it actually does it here better, and the metal is going to probably beat up a lot more. So I might actually do that. I might take the baking soda um, toothpaste and just scratch it with the toothbrush just to get it so it has like a nice tooth, just a little tooth to it, so it sticks better, like like this plastic one does. This is kind of a mess. Now see how when you use the concentrated watercolors, it just really stains. The, if I try to wipe this, it's still going to have a stain under it. It's just the way it is. So this is my lovely palette tutorial. <laughs> it's very exciting, I know. Um, if you have any more questions about how to set up palettes, um, leave them below in the comment section. I'll try and answer them as much as I can. I try and answer as many comments as I can. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Depends on the day, um, how much work I have to do. Um, this week is kind of crazy, but um, yeah, so that's it. So. Uh, the next tutorials that I will do for a supply site slash um, beginner, like understanding watercolor, will probably be around. I've done the brushes, I've done the paper, now the palette. Maybe around color theory and creating a palette that you can use to create paintings. Um, you know, like creating a, what I mean by creating your own palette, not like the paper. I'm creating their palette for the particular design you're going to use what colors you're going to use for design and how to create that. So I know that some people have been asking about that. Um, that's coming eventually. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, thanks so much for stopping by. I, I appreciate all your comments and likes and uh, your feedback. And have a great day.